Okay, sorry about the extra noise. It's raining outside and I've got heaters going in the barn today. It's take a little bit of the chill off. What we've got here is I'm working on splitting a 1969 Minneapolis Moline Jetstar 3 Super. Bought this tractor this summer from the original owner. Um, actually, his dad bought it new in October of 1969. And uh, when I got it, I noticed the clutch pedal uh, didn't have a whole lot of play and the, the adjustment was kind of gone out of it. Uh, I noticed the PTO turned all the time. So tackling some, uh, some issues this winter. Uh, so it's ready to go for the spring. The uh, paint on this, this tractor is super nice. It's polished up well. I'm still gonna do some work on it and paint the white band and uh, the black band around the hood. But other than that, and some new tires and uh, different little things. I'm gonna leave this one pretty much original. So, so far I've taken off the hood. Um, I have um, taken the gas tank off kind of prepped uh, the main part of the tractor here for the split. I've got to get the temperature sending gauge uh, out, out of the block. I've been trying. It doesn't want to come out. It's the original gauge and it works. So I'm going to get a little creative and try to save that original gauge. Um, I've already got the hydraulics uh, off it so I can get into the PTO and inspect the PTO. So we're moving right along on this project. Um, I need to get the starter off today and clean up uh, underneath down uh, where I'm gonna put the splitting stands on it. And as you can see, I've got the whole hydraulic unit off, lifted off as one piece after taking out the, uh, the mounting bolts for it. I've taken off the hydraulic pump, uh, which I'll show you in a minute here. And then I got into uh, the um, the case here just to look at the PTO and I see the brake band is broken and there's some issues in there that I've got to sort through. I'm learning this is the first time I've done this. I've been told this is the new style PTO on this tractor that they put on the later sick, uh, Jetstar 3s and uh, 302s. Um, so I've got to get into that. I've got the hydraulic pump apart over here on the bench. The needle bearings are good. Uh, the wear plates are slightly worn. I need to uh, put a seal kit in it. It's got some wear on the, on the plate in there, but it, I don't think that's substantial. So I'm gonna just kind of go with, uh, try to put a seal kit in it and see if, if that helps. So it's, the hydraulics seemed a little bit weak on it, but then again, the fluid that came out of it was not in the best of shape when I, uh, when I drained the gear and the uh, and the hydraulic fluid. So we got some more preparation things to do here and then we'll come back and I'll show you the splitting stands and uh, different things like that. Okay, we're a little closer to putting the splitting stands on. I was gonna stop here and show you the stands and how they work. These stands were uh, custom made by my friend Joe Pro. He uh, had them built Got a slight problem on this tractor because it has 14, 9, 28 rear tires. The back end sits pretty low. So as you can see on this stand, it's made to have the uh, wheels down and uh, so you can roll the front away. But because it's sitting so low, it wouldn't fit under there. It works perfect on a 302 or um, 670, uh, any bigger tractor, but on here, it just sits a little too low. So. Uh, and it mounts up here in the middle. You've got holes that you I already cleaned out the holes on the bottom there The bolts will go up through there. That is a slight curve to that So we'll put a washer on each side to make it sit a little bit better for the rear He had a custom plate made for his uh, floor jack that um, It fits in the pin, you just take off the plate that's normally on there. You unbolt the drawbar front uh, mounting point. You put it up and the bolts that mount the uh, front drawbar bracket there just bolt through the two holes on the top of the stand. You crank it up there, you bolt it in, and then you can adjust your height on the rear. And we're gonna roll the rear away. Since this is on wheels, it'll all roll away very nicely. So, 
that's where I'm at right now. I need to do a little bit more work and work on getting these uh, hooked up. I'm gonna put metal plates um, where the screws go down and you're gonna hit these four by sixes. I'm gonna put some metal plates there just so they don't dig into the wood and we should be good. Okay, after a little bit of time, I had to do some more prep work on the splitting stands to get them ready. I figured this is a good time to pause and uh, show what we have going here with the splitting stands. So I've got them on, like I said, on the four by fours. I got the screws on a metal piece. Um, it does have these handy little brackets on the side so you can put an angle iron up. Um, the mullings, it makes it nice because there's different holes that you can uh, mount it to at the top. You can see it's got some holes lower on there for the 302 and the 670. I put tape around the, the top so it doesn't scratch up the paint when you're doing this. So I've got that uh, pretty well braced up on both sides. We've got the rear floor jack uh, mounted up there like it should be with those screws in. And then I've got my front end tires blocked up. I think I'm about ready, so I just need to come around and take all these bolts out around uh, the housing. And uh, once that's done, then I will uh, be able to pull it apart. Everything is uh, pulled loose. You can see all of my hoses, my wiring, the uh, oil pressure uh, tube is disconnected, the throttle rod is disconnected. So I think we're, uh, we're about ready to pull it apart here. Okay, so I've gotten all the bolts out around the bell housing and as you can see that it's already started to separate. I had to adjust my screws uh, down there that pulled up the front end. And as I adjusted those, it just started working itself apart. One of the things I do, and I'm not a professional at this and this is not my full-time job, uh, as you can tell, this is, this is my first video, if I can figure out how to get it on YouTube, just because when I was researching on how to do this stuff on my own, there's nothing out there, so I thought I would try to do something, and it's uh, just something I thought I'd give a shot. But anyway, what I do when I pull out nuts and bolts and stuff is I put them in, uh, I use sandwich bags because they're cheap, and then I label them with a Sharpie. So I've got my bolts in, uh, in the sandwich bag. One of the things that I ran into when I was taking the bolts out was I got over here to the one that goes through here and uh, the clutch safety switch on the later models I had to take that plate off in order to access that uh, that bolt but you can see there's pilot um, dowels on either side to help you line things up and that's where we're at right now I think we're about ready to roll it away so uh, I need to do a little bit more prep and then we'll roll it away Okay, and after a little more encouragement, she came apart. Uh, here's the back end of it. You can see the uh, throwout bearing, uh, the yoke. Obviously, I'm dripping some fluids down in there. It's pretty nasty. The other side, we have the clutch. And we'll pull that apart, but I think this is original. I don't think this has ever been changed. You can see the wear. Um, so it's going to be interesting to get into this and uh, see what it looks like. Because, like I said, I don't think I don't think this tractor's ever been apart. Now that we're at this uh, part of the, the dismantling, got to take the six bolts off. There's two, four, six in order to get the clutch itself off. Um, I've already broke those loose. So I'm going to take those off. And then we'll kind of be able to see what the uh, flywheel looks like and uh, kind of go from there on, on how that looks. So that's, that's the next thing I'm going to work on right here. And it helps if I remember where I just put the wrench in.
probably most people would take that throttle rod out of the way. Um, it's just kind of a pain to take it off from up in there, so I'm not going to do that, but uh, I'm just going to be bothered by the whole process of, of working on this thing, I guess, rather than probably take five minutes. it off. Okay, so basically where I am now is I've got the clutch out, I've got the pressure plate, I've looked at the flywheel, the flywheel is actually pretty smooth, I don't know that I'm going to have to turn it, but we're going to have to pull it in order to put a crank seal in it because I do believe it's leaking a little bit of oil. You kind of see down there at the bottom, it's a little wet, so while we're in there we might as well do that. On the back side, I'll pull out the uh, throw out bearing and we're going to go through the PTO in the back because, like I said, it's running constantly. Um, I know the brake bands broke. We'll look at the, uh, the clutch plates in there to see how they, you know, the condition of them. While we have it apart, we're just going to go through and uh, make sure everything is good. And then we'll put new seals in it and uh, do that kind of stuff. Just as a note, after I've got it split, I put a second jack underneath the... Uh, the tractor where this one mounts as you can see is kind of back and it's a little bit wobbly um, so just for safety put a second jack stand under while we work on it uh, the other one's fine it wasn't going to tip over but I just always like to play it safe and like I said we've got the front all blocked up everything's good to go there I, uh, I like to be as safe as I can be because I have made some mistakes before which end up Fortunately, me not getting hurt bad, but I've gotten hurt because sometimes you just don't think about it until it's done because I just keep get going and I don't stop. So that's where it is. I'll make another video when uh, we move, move this forward. If I can figure out how to edit these together and uh, put it on YouTube. Again, not my primary job. Neither is working on tractors. Just something I love doing. I love working on mulling tractors and uh that's just what keeps me from going insane is working on these yellow beauties so until the next video hopefully uh if i call things by the wrong name or whatever on these videos have patience with me i 
I know what it is. Sometimes I just, when I'm trying to think and speak at the same time, not everything comes out right.